name is Jessica Wong and today I'm going to talk to you about the proper ways to don tack. We're going to go over an overview of the tack that we're going to use today along with proper ways for adjustments and positioning as well as some common problems that I've seen over the years. Since there are so many horse related accidents that happen yearly, I think feel it's very important to listen and watch for the proper ways to position and adjust your tack. As a registered nurse and a professional horse trainer for 10, 12 plus years, I come across and see a number of accidents that happen yearly. These can include fractures, concussions, brain and spinal injuries, and in worst case instances, even death. Some statistics that I have from Charlie Hicks, a writer for Ezine Articles, he conducted a study, um, horseback riding accidents, during the years of 2001 to 2003, 66 hospitals across the United States recorded 102,000 non-fatal horseback related accidents. Of that, 60% of these were from female riders. Of that, 11,500 of these accidents did result in traumatic brain and spinal injuries. 10 of these states also reported that they had over 200 deaths per year over this time from horseback riding injuries alone. For that, for every six head and brain injuries that they had, they had one spinal injury. So for these results alone, this shows how dangerous horseback riding alone can be. And then to add ill-fitting tack on top of it, you're just asking for an accident. These results showed that horseback riding alone was 20 times more dangerous than riding motorcycles per hour for riding. For me personally, I have 10, 12 plus years of personal horse training experience. I find it's very important to educate some of our customers that come and buy tax, some of the people that ride with us, etc., on the proper ways to position their tack because nobody likes to see anyone get hurt and that makes it not fun. Um, there's a professional barrel racer, Shannon Camarillo. She's a several time national champion barrel racer. She has a book, uh, 1999 issue barrel racing, um, and it goes along with a lot of what I'm going to talk about today on proper ways to adjust your tack. This is the bridle that I'm going to show you how to adjust today on this horse. This is a western bridle. It's just a one ear head stall. It's uh, got a D-ring twisted wire snaffle in it with a curb chain as well. It started raining on us so we had to move somewhere inside where we wouldn't be getting wet. But this is a cabison. A lot of people don't use them but I highly recommend them. They're a device that goes on under your bridle and I can show you how to put one on. But they aid in keeping your horse's mouth closed around the bit so you don't have the gaping of the mouth whenever you're trying to turn and such or stopping, it makes the pressure that you apply to your horse's mouth a lot less and making them more responsive. So it actually makes it easier on you and your horse's mouth. Now I'm going to talk to you about what you choose to use as a saddle pad. I like to use two pads on everything I ride just to build it up and to give them extra support. A horse's back is just like our back. We need to take care of it. My bottom pad that I choose most of the time is Neoprene waffle type pad. It allows the uh, air to flow through it and the debris, but it also helps with them to stay positioned well. My top pad, I like to use the thicker felt type pad. This just aids an extra support and comfort for the horse. You want to make sure that your pads are clean, free from debris underneath. You don't want a whole bunch of old hair or anything building up underneath because that's just going to act as an irritant to your horse's back. Getting a saddle, you want to make sure that it properly fits your horse. This is a saddle I always ride on this horse, so I know that it fits her well. I just want to talk about some of the points that I see problems with the most when people are riding. You want to look at your cinch and make sure that nothing's broken on it, it doesn't have rips or holes, and you also want to make sure that it's clean. You don't want a whole lot of hair or build up on it. I and then this is your back cinch. Again, same as the front. You want to make sure it's clean. You don't have any buildup of residue of sweat or horse hair or nothing like that on it. And then your breast collar. 
again, positioning and everything's a big deal with it. I see a lot of horses get rubbed raw from them having to position them properly. And this aids to keep your saddle in place and hold up on your horse's withers where it needs to be. Okay, now I'm just going to show you the proper way to position your tack on your horse. Again, I'm going to take two pads like I talked about before. And when I set them on my horse, I want to make sure that they're up far enough on their withers, whatever your saddle's placed, it's not going to be rubbing them. You also want to make sure that whenever your saddle's put on, that your pad is far enough back that your saddle's not overhanging. And then you want to make sure it's in the center. You want to make sure that you have room on each end, each side, that is equal. Now I'm just going to show you the proper way to put on your saddle. down because you, you want to make sure that your leather's not twisted, things aren't combined. That's another problem that I see all the time. People will go to put something on and it's twisted or it's not the right way that it needs to be. When you go to adjust your sitch, you don't want it way back here. You don't want it way up front where it's going to rub your horse's legs. You want a nice comfortable position about an inch or so behind your horse's front leg. And another thing you want to look at, you want to make sure your saddle's sitting on your horse's withers right. You also want to make sure that your this is your gullet. You want to make sure that it's not riding on your horse's withers because this is going to cause a rubbing problem on your horse's withers and it can make their back very sore. Whenever I'm first saddling a horse, I don't want to cinch them up real tight. I want to give them room to breathe a little bit. I'm not going to get on this horse right now, so it doesn't need to be so tight that it's cutting her off on air. Your back cinch is the same. You always want to make sure that you have some type of strap or leather or something that's got your back cinch connected to your front cinch. When you're riding, there can be cases where it, your back cinch gets back in your horse's flanks and then you're going to have, that's going to cause a problem. Also, you don't want your cinch too loose where it's hanging down. In the summertime, horses can kick at flies and such and they can even get their back foot hung in it if it's hanging too low. But on the other instance, you don't want it too tight either. Um, if you get it too tight on your horse, some horses that aren't used to it, it can cause a problem as well. I like to mine snug, but there's, you can obviously see there's enough room to fit a hand or a finger between it. For your breast collar, whenever you go to put this on, you want it to sit right on your horse's chest. You don't want it too low where it's hanging down here where it's rubbing when your horses are walking. You want it up where their neck ties into their chest, where it's going to lay at a nice place. It's not going to be too tight or too uncomfortable for your horse but it's there to aid. That way your, horse, your saddle's not sliding back and causing problems. A big problem that I see is having it probably way too loose. A lot of times you see it where somebody's breast collar is riding real low down here and with every step your horse takes, their shoulder's rubbing on it, it's rubbing hair off of them and it just causes a a galding issue. Now I want to show you the proper way to put on a bridle. I told you before I would show you how to position a cavison. For this horse, whenever I go to put her bridle on, I'm not going to leave this on. It just slides over their ears and it rests on their head in the place your halter or your bridle normally would. 
you want it to go around the bridge of their nose, but you want it up far enough that it's not going to interfere with your curb chain whenever you ask for them to stop. And you just run it through there. Depending on your horse depends on the amount of pressure you want to put on there. I like to make mine fairly snug so I know that there's, they're going to be nice and responsive for me. For your head stall. Whenever you go to put your bridle on, a big thing that I look for, some bridles have brow bands. A big problem I see, some people have their brow bands slid way down where it's in your horse's eyes. Your brow band needs to sit at the base of your horse's ear. For this bridle, it's a one-eared head stall and it just goes around one of her ears. It's not pushing too hard on one ear, it's not hanging too far down, it's not in her line of vision. Another thing you want to look at is your bit. A problem that I see nine times out of ten with people, they have their bit way too far down in their horse's mouth. It's hanging too far down, it's not touching the corners of their mouth or anything. Whenever you adjust your bridle for a snaffle bit, straight bit, anything, you want to see a crease in your horse's mouth. You want them to look like they're smiling. Usually one or two wrinkles is good. You want your curb chain loose, but not too loose. For this, this is a snaffle bit. Your curb chain doesn't serve a whole lot of purpose. This is putting more pressure on the corners and the bars of your horse's mouth than anything. I've tried to touch on common problems that I've seen as we've went through and have got to each piece of tack. Another problem that I commonly see is people having their reins at different lengths. A lot of times you might see one rein that's really tight on one side and the other one's hanging way down. This is just going to confuse your horse. They're not going to know what you're wanting. Just try to make your reins equal and even on each side. That way, whenever you're asking something, you're asking with the same amount of pressure. Okay, so we've talked about an overview of some of the different types of tack you can use. We've talked about proper adjustments and fittings for tack, and we've also talked about some common problems that you see. Remembering the increasing amount of statistics that show how high injuries are due to horse-related accidents, it's very important to remember the proper ways to position your tack. This is not only going to save you in the long run, but it's also good for the safety and the well-being of your horse as well. I'd like to thank you all for taking your time to listen to this speech and watch this demonstration. I hope maybe that this has answered some questions for some of you that have had problems with positioning your tack. Thank you again.